What is going on, everybody? Hope you're having a wonderful day whenever you watch this. This is Bobby Fi with my man, Mark Scalato, and we are going to be talking through our site and basically how to utilize it, how to use it, how to use SaberSim through us, how to sign up, all the things that uh, you'd want to know, and what you're getting by using TrueDFS. So, Mark, I want to thank you so much. You've done so much to build up this site, and we're still continuing every day to make progress on improving and making it more for what you guys want. So, again, I want to remind everybody at the very beginning, Go to our, our Discord channel and go to the True DFS support. If you have any thoughts, anything you'd like to see that we're not featuring, go ahead there. But I think we've made uh, strides by leaps and bounds, and it's a lot and thanks to Mark. So Mark's going to help us give us a little walkthrough uh, how to utilize our site. Mark? Yeah, no, that's me. great. Thanks, thanks, Bobby. I appreciate it. Um, let me jump in and just start out. Let's bring up the homepage, right? So um, when, when I first started working with you guys, we talked a lot about getting to true DFS 2.0. I would say I'm comfortable saying we're at like 1.5 about right now. We're about halfway to where I think our, our maybe our final 2.0 version is, but, but the homepage looks very different now. And we try to do a lot here to kind of help the community find the content that they're looking for. So let me just do a quick overview of a little bit about navigation and, and where you can find some key features. And then let's dive into SaberSim and really talk about what that offering does for us. So we organize the site like most other DFS sites do. We're organized around the sports so that you can find the content you're looking for. So let's say you only care about MLB. Going to MLB, you've got projections. Let's talk about one of the changes we made recently. We simp we used to only have a single page for projections. MLB, so far, at least to start the season, has had a, a ton of split slates. And so that gets very complicated with the, with the optimizers and the tools. And so generally speaking, if there's a single slate on the day, you'll find your projections in the main MLB projections tab. If there's a big early slate, you could find that also in MLB projections. I know that's a little inconsistent, a little confusing. If there's a true split slate, though, we'll put the early games in the early game section and the late in the late. My advice in the short term until we come up with a better system, which we hopefully will do, is just click on both until you see the players that are actually playing in the games that you're looking to play, right? So find the list that matches what you want to do. Again, we've got the same, all our projections for every sport can be found here. Uh, we've got some other items you can get to any of our old videos in case there's some back videos you wanted to watch. That's that projections are key. This page will also get you to projections. So you go here and then you can pick any sport that you want. But projections are a key backbone of what Sheets does for us at, at True DFS. Obviously, in addition to creating all the content, they're kind of some of the best in the industry because they they really look at all the industry projections for points and ownership. And then we actually do weighting of things that actually perform higher. We give them a better uh, rating in our overall ranking system. So we mm -hmm. reward people for producing good projections and we kind of lower the value of projections that don't tend to be as reliable so that we feel very comfortable in our projection system. Our yep. projections also are fed into Saberson. Yeah. And that's, and that's a really, you know, it's a good point that you just you mentioned that, that we are taking a little bit somewhat the, the overall average of, of what people are doing and weighting it towards, you know, site other sites in addition to ours that uh, perform the best. So I truly believe Sheets's projections are the best ones in the industry. And I truly believe SaberSim is the best optimizer in the industry. And I can say that without feeling weird. And it's, you know, we, we were, were talking about this on a day where I, you know, I finished third in a tournament and SaberSim had a guy at one per, at a 2%. It was ended up 1.6% owned that other sites on average were 12 to 15% on. Things like that are really valuable when you're trying to play a game theory game, especially as it re relates to MLB. There's a lot of really, really good value add that I feel like you're getting with these projections versus others in the industry. So I just want to throw that out there. Uh, Mark, why don't you continue taking us through it and other things? Yeah. Like so let me let me actually dive in before we go to SaberSim. Let's actually look at because we made significant changes to how our projections get presented on the site from a from a UI or user interface perspective. Right. Sheets used to literally post his Google Docs into into our website and then people got very comfortable with those. I think this modification is is substantial, but I don't think we've ever taken the time to explain to people necessarily how to use it. So I'm just going to spend a minute. Mm -hmm. Our projections will come in here. You'll always have a date and time that these are updated. So you'll know if you're looking at old or new projections. These projections were put out at 5.09 this evening. So they're, they're relatively new or recent projections going into lock. A couple things we're still working through. You'll notice sometimes the sheet's value score is in a different color. It's in green. There was a point on a live broadcast that I was uh, kind of running in the booth for you and, and Eric, where he mentioned something about when you see a sheet's value score over 200, it's very notable due to his model. 
And I said, okay, Eric, I'm going to start flagging anything that's over 200 in the NBA as something to draw people's attention to. One of the things Eric and I have to get back to is actually tiering and flagging other colors and other sports and other breakpoints in his metrics that really matter to help draw people's attention to things that are important. But again, so when you see these two numbers in green, that's because we had one specific moment where we identified that over 200 in Cheats value score means something. It means these players are very hard to fade without a very strong game plan. These are players you most likely are going to need in your lineup. We expect them to be in the optimal a very large percentage of the time. So we want to draw people's attention to that. We've added some new little twists lately, too. We noticed that the general search feature is great. You can type in the name of a player, right, and it'll it'll bring up the results for uh, a give sorry, maybe I spelled that wrong. Um, forgot the second I. Um, so we can filter to players. But what we started to do was we actually started to add name filters here. So now you can just filter in by name instead of having it to search all the fields. But what that also allows you to do is now there's a team filter. So if you just want to look at the Dallas players, because you know you're going to play Luca and you're trying to figure out who to run with him, you don't have to scroll through all the lists of players. Again, this is playoffs, so there's fewer teams. It's a little easier to navigate. But when it's a full slate of all the teams, it's a lot to look through. Also, we've broken down positions because we started to see that as well from the usage statistics. A lot of people were coming in here and saying, I'm just trying to find a center. And when you have to do that in the global search, it's a little more challenging. But now that you can come in and just filter by all the places where centers are, now you know all the centers on the slate very easily. You can resort any column just by clicking on it. All this is fairly standard, right? You can sort in either order. The other cool parts are the export utilities, which, again, some people probably use. We love that people use SaberSim. That's the, our optimizer of choice, right? We also have our own lineup builders that we integrate with our own projections. But if you're using somebody else's optimizer, you can simply click the CSV button. It'll download all this data for you to upload into any optimizer of your choice. Maybe you're building your own projection optimizer system and you want to use our values in your own tool. If your particular optimizer is a little sticky and doesn't like all of these columns, maybe your optimizer only wants name and points, no problem. We've never talked about this on the stream before, but I don't think, but if you click on columns, you can hide all the columns you don't care about. And yeah. now your, ex, your export file has just the two columns that your optimizer might care about in case any of those other columns are going to get in the way. Again, our friends at SaberSim will take all the columns you upload and you just match the ones you actually want to import into their data structure. So you don't need to do this for SaberSim, but there might be some optimizers out there in the industry where you need to reduce the columns to just what you care about. If you were doing some of your own work and wanted to pull it directly into an Excel file, you could. Again, simple enough. DraftKings, FanDuel, Yahoo. Generally, you're going to see DraftKings and FanDuel for all sports. Some sports we have a Yahoo offering where on, on the larger sports. And then some sports we actually offer different things. For MLB, you'll find stack charts because stacks are super important in MLB, as I've learned uh, early on in this MLB season. So for MLB, you'll get DraftKings, FanDuel, and then you'll get the two stack rankings. And right. this allows you to analyze the different stacks that that we believe are best for the teams. And again, people asked this question just today, I think, on Discord. What's the difference between, you know, the RS, the VS, and the MS? Well, this just represents the raw stack over here. So these are kind of like, this is the raw score for these players. This is if you're sort of trying to go different and find the stack where there's a little more value per dollar. And then this is sort of like a modified stack that kind of tries to juggle value plus projection. So you're not getting too much ownership but you're also getting a decent amount of output from a point perspective. So uh, right. anything you want to add to stacks, Bobby? No, I think that makes a lot of sense. It's, and it's, and I think it, I, hopefully it's useful. If there's any questions about it again, I'm happy to be here and answer them. But, uh, but this seems like a really good way to explain it actually. And, and you did, you, you feel like there's nothing else to explain to people exporting maybe if they haven't or importing if they, or I'm sorry, not importing exporting if they if they have and you, you that's pretty much covers it i think yeah I, I think so like i said most of the time the optimizers i've used primarily i did use uh fantasy labs back in the day and i've used sabersim mm -hmm. the, the csv copy here and the file that it gives you has generally worked for me in the optimizers i needed to without even removing other columns but i know some people remember sheets as original formats which only had two columns for exporting and so if again if you're using an optimizer that only wants certain columns just come in here and hide the columns you don't care about before you hit the export button and you'll get just the just the data you're looking for, right? No, that 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 all makes perfect sense. And and you know, in terms of like, okay, so so we have sheets as projections as one offering. Another yeah. offering is that there's a couple things that that we're doing here. So we you got Rody Rody fifty one, who's just an absolute crusher, dominates high stakes, uh, did it last year in baseball especially and football. Um, and just this is the time of year where you want to you want to get his takes. So his uh, we've got his pitching his pitching rundown, his top stacks as well as his core plays. For me, you get my core plays, 
my early lineup build. So I'll, I will literally, the way I do most things is through hand building. I use Saberson projections. I use Sheets' projections. I use a lot of different tools to try and come to where I'm going, but mostly I'm using them a lot as reference because we're slightly different players, Brody, Sheets, and I. They're going more based on just numbers oriented. Um, sometimes, whether it's in Sheets' case, um, many, many buy-ins in a small, many uh, number of buy-ins in a small buy-in large field tournament, Brody's going to be more heavily focused on trying to get different in, in one or two spots that he can really focus on in the high buy-ins. And I am somewhere in between, but I, I do a lot of my own research as well. So I utilize both of those things. But we've got, you know, just if you don't mind clicking on Rody's just just his little yeah, absolutely. His rundown. Um, yeah, we created our little Jake's takes corner, right? That's where all of all of Rody's stuff lives. So this is yeah. uh this is our stuff yesterday. And Rody gave these also away today free in Discord. So if you're in our Discord, you got these for free today. But this is a premium piece of content. He explains kind of you know, th these are his MLB stacks. This is who he likes today. Uh, right. and, and and then why. Right. And part of what our site, you know, is going on for many different reasons, but we aren't, there's so many numbers out there and so many different things and optimizers. We have that through Sabersim. Yep. Um, for our, our takes in general, they're going to be quicker, shorter, maybe even not that many words in an article. Right. They're going to talk about what we think, what we're going to do. And that's why I said my early lineup builds, I feel like are an, a, a tool that I've, I haven't seen anybody else using. And Rody's actually telling you the teams exactly that he's going to play in what order he likes them generally. That's the same thing that I do. I do the same thing with my bets. With um, You can also find our cores through Sabersim, but I do post my core every day, uh, a picture of it for, for MLB and NBA on, uh, on our homepage. You can find it right there. But in general, we are going to be less on the 5,000 word articles. We're going to be focusing on here's what we're doing. And all of the reasons why I feel like we try to do a pretty good job of explaining on every show, which I do three or four shows a day at least, um, or, or or segments. She does two, one or two to meet with me. Rody does at four or five times a week. We'll be on there on our shows explaining some of the thoughts behind it. But we want to make you guys get better. So these are what we're doing. If there's anybody else, we have these roundtable discussions that's interested. We we would like you guys to like seriously DM me on our on our Discord. And we will get you in there for our next roundtable discussion. We ha we don't have them planned for more than once every couple of weeks right now. Eventually, we want to be every week doing this and going through some lineup review, some ways we could get better, some ways you could get better, some ideas that you have, some some back and forth, and just a general way how you can become a better DFS player. Because the one thing that people want sometimes so much, they do want just the plays. And and look, we're offering you some some of that. That we're offering you as much as anybody else is. But the way you get better is through process and understanding what you're trying to do to differentiate yourself from these heaps of people that you're trying to beat and how to do it per tournament. That's something that I just wanted to remind everybody. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, Mark, if you can go back to the uh, the homepage and just run through real quick, because my bets of the day are like this. I'll just put my my actual bets. That I, I believe yesterday we had we had, we had only one, one thing I had yesterday. I was only one for two yesterday, so it put me at 10 in my last 12. But I'm 82% on the year for NBA, which is crazy. I don't bet that many games. These are the games that I believe in. I got the I got the Milwaukee right. I got the Golden State wrong. Yes, on, on this particular screen. Um, but in general, it'll have all my bets for the sports. And then what I will incorporate to that as we continue through the uh, MLB season, and it will be starting next week, which you don't know when you're watching this, so it's probably pointless for me to say that. But <laughs> by the time you watch this, it will probably be active while I'll be doing my home run props also and uh, giving you the exact – home run props that I like and at what number I like them at. So it's another thing to look for as well. So in addition to just my normal, that's just a simple bets one. Um, Mark, if you don't mind just clicking real quickly on my, uh, the uh, builds early in the day. Just yeah, so you can yeah see. absolutely. These are my first builds when I make all my lineups in the day. And this is, gives you an idea of how your, your brain works. And if you have any questions, if you're looking at these and you're a premium member, let me know. Like I, I, I a little bit differently. I'll do a four two one one stack. I'll do a four one 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 stack. I'll do a four three one. I'll do a three three two. But I mostly, you know, primarily on bigger slates, you go with the five two one or the five one ones and that. But this gives you an idea of exactly who I'm using and how I'm using them. And I'm happy to discuss why I'm using them that way. I just think it's better to have the interaction than sometimes the written words that can go on forever and you get overwhelmed with information. Overall, we're trying to take out all that stuff for you. You don't need to know what all of what baseball stats matter. They all matter in different ways. Mm -hmm. We're trying to harness this and make this a simple one-stop place 
for you to get those answers. And we're doing it in a number of different ways. And these are just showing showing. Yeah, just to support what you said, Bobby, because you're obviously the one producing all this content. Don't confuse our brevity for not being high quality, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that we don't think 5,000 word articles are useful to some people. They are. Right. Like good writers, a well-written article you can learn a lot from. And there's plenty of free articles out there for you guys to consume. What we're trying to do, though, is we're actually trying to help what I always call like the working man's DFS player a little bit, which is me. I've got a full time job and I want to play DFS. I don't have time to come home at night and consume mass amounts of content and data to get to my lineups. Brevity here, this high quality. Oh, my God. This is what Bobby was looking at early in the day. This was his golf build. By the way, I'm just going to go check my my FanDuel golf build that I threw in this morning. Yeah, so I had right. Rahm and Smalley, right? So I had two of your kind of early picks. I also threw in Nick Taylor and Tony Finau and Chris Kirk. We, you know, some of that was just fitting into my lineup, my optimizer. But it's like, it was good to know this is where your head was at when I was making my lineup at one point without having to read three paragraphs on why John Rahm is the best play on the slate. Right. 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 We get that question every day on Discord. We get that question every day in email and any other way you can reach us. Hey, what are the best plays tonight in NBA? I'm going to I'm gonna give you the short answer I give everybody every day. Have you not looked at our projections tab yet? It already tells you who the quote-unquote best plays are. The key isn't to play the eight best players. The key is to play the best lineup. And the best lineup includes having leverage over your opponents because you have low-owned players that they don't have. So it's not just picking the eight highest projected guys. But when people ask who the best player is on the slate, that's kind of what they're typically asking. They're saying, like, who's going to score the most points in the NBA tonight? And I'm like, this shouldn't even take any work. You don't even need to have Bobby cover that on the Discord. Just go to our projections and look. These guys are probably going to score the most points on the slate tonight. The top five guys probably going to score the most points. That's just, you know, or sort by fantasy points. These are the guys really that are going to score the top five points. That's, that's mm -hmm. you know, again, given range of outcomes, it may not be. But these are where everybody's going to be telling you. So you're going to go listen to 25 shows from all these different people or read these 5,000 word articles. And you know what they're going to say? Joel Embiid's a solid play tonight because he's projected to do 58.44 points. But Luka Doncic, also a solid play tonight, because he's going to do 58 points. But you know what? James Harden, also a good play tonight. Like, that doesn't really help you. Seeing right. Bobby's lineups and how those things interplay with one another, this gives you a much better sense of how a lineup gets constructed, right? So you yeah. don't just play the guys at the top of the slate. Again, these were Bobby's from yesterday, so they're not going to match those projections, which are from today. But th this is a lineup that, you know, Jokic was certainly top of the heap yesterday from a projection standpoint, right? But you've got to balance around him other guys that are going to build, give you a winning lineup. And so, right. again, just don't confuse brevity for lack of quality. I, I always want to point that out because our content always comes off that way. It's like quick, brief, and to the point. Yep, and that's unlike this paragraph that I just uttered in this video. No, 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 that's, not wonderful. Quick, brief, that's wonderful. No, 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 that's exactly what we're, we are talking about. And then, you know, there's all of our stuff, and our stuff is, fa is factored in, and I think it's a good time to talk about SaberSim. Yeah, let's um, go over there. As well, because, so if you if you purchase SaberSim through us, which we're, we're literally charging just a fraction more than they are, and it's only because we, we believe we add, we add a lot of value. We also very much value our relationship and, you know, could have made a decision to, 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 to do the same. We're literally charging a few dollars more for what we are offering, which gives us you access to everything we just talked about, including Sheets' projections and all that. And then you have, on top of it, me and Rody, we post our core every day uh, on SaberSim. Um, I believe it's terrific, especially for tournament players. We're always happy to have a discussion about cash games, but for the most part, our slight skews more towards a tournament style, which I, genu I genuinely believe is like, well, it's what most people do. It's more fun. It's more interesting. Right. And I think, honestly, it's more profitable, especially as it relates to baseball, because you'll find people with 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 the baseball lineups that you end up building the lineup you love and you have three guys at, at less than 10 percent. These guys would go, oh, my God, I doubled up my 50 dollars. I could have won one hundred thousand if I entered into this tournament. Happens all the time. When I worked right. at Roto Grinders for years, this would come up all the time. But this would have done this if I would enter this. Maybe maybe not, maybe cash games aren't the thing for you, even right. if they are. We're happy to include it. You can see always. If you sort by my core, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, Mike, absolutely. We'll, we'll take a look by the ownership. So you can, you can see there's some reasons I'm playing some chalky guys, but then I've got Jose Ramirez in at 6%, which by the way, I think he ended up at 2% owned, although other sites had him at 12%. Um, right. And he ended up, six, you know, 2% two, two, uh, 2 owned. He ended up hitting two home runs. That was wonderful, obviously. You can't project somebody to hit two home runs. 
but I included a guy who's really low owned in part of my core. Kyle Tucker wasn't in the lineup, then he was. It was a whole complicated thing. But you can see I've got a 2.2% owned Trey Mancini as part of my core. There are going to be guys in my core that are not going to make sense for cash games. So when that comes up, I would suggest you use my core combined with the total number of ownership. Or if you have any cash game questions, just DM me, just DM me or more better yet, put it in our MLB channel and tag me and you'll get answers from me and a lot of other smart people who know what they're talking about. And if you're playing cash games too, first of all, our own internal lineup optima, our lineup builder will help you because it's generally producing an optimal lineup, which is essentially a cash game lineup. And SaberSim has its own, you know, again, cash lineups are actually way easier than GPP lineups, right, Bobby? I mean, that's the whole thing is like the math just checks out. So like just to show you guys, if you switch this to cash, right, instead of GPP, it essentially just says turn off all these fancy filters in SaberSim and now go produce basically the lineup that has the most projected points inside the salary cap. And yep. there's your cash build. doesn't take a lot to build a, build a cash lineup. And then as if you're really a cash game player, what you have to start to do is you have to know the lobbies, you have to know who you're playing against, and then you have to play those little one and two man contests against the other person because you know they're always going to play this guy and you have to sometimes not play that guy if you want to be different. But you're only trying to beat one or two people. The optimal lineup is going to pretty much put you there most of the time. Yep, Absolutely. Um, let's talk about a couple other things real quickly from Sabersim. Just you can see, uh, Mark. Why don't you take it away? But like, you, yeah. you, you can see the Sabersim ownership. You can see the, uh, the sort of true DFS. Stuff. Yeah. So let's talk about how that all works, right? So by default, every day before we do any projections, Sabersim, because they run simulations continuously for every slate, they're always going to have an SS projection score in here. That's going to be there for every sport that they do pro- that they do simulations on all of the time. Once Eric has a chance to run our projections for the day and multiple times throughout the day, we're going to auto upload those projections to Sabersim. We're going to notify people on Discord that that's happened, that new projections have released and Sabersim's been updated. And then when you come over to Sabersim, the default source is going to be the true DFS projection. So you're going to have Eric's projections here in the true DFS column, Sabersim's projections here, which also, by the way, allows you to look over. So you can say, oh, wait a second, Sabersim has this a little higher. And if you're kind of in on the Sabersim projection, you can just go in and edit. You can, you, you know, you can make this 24 if that's what you're feeling on the day. But we're, we feel pretty comfortable about ours. Now, I will caution you against the average column for one reason and one reason only. Part of Sabersim scores are actually already built into our overall projections because we're pulling in all the industries stuff, including Sabersims. So if you're using the average, which is an average of theirs and ours, you're actually slightly heavily weighting Sabersim stuff because you're kind of double counting it a little bit. So just caution people on, on using the average projection. But again, you have the choice, Sabersim, true DFS or average. And then ownership right now, ownership is Sabersim's ownership, even though we do our own ownership projections and those might be even the better than our projections. Sometimes sheets get ownership even way better than he mm-hmm. gets points. Um, mm-hmm. Sabersim doesn't have the feature for us to auto upload those yet today as being a partner of theirs. It's on their on their software roadmap. And so we hope at some point to be able to give you both of those values. If you were really dedicated, though, and you really wanted Sheets as ownership and you didn't want to just look at it separately in a separate tab, you can actually upload your own Sheets projections file and then it'll keep you, it'll keep our ownership in there as a separate column. Yeah. So you do actually have that in the short term as well. Um, so again, our guys can load in their cores. You get to pick your projections that you want to run with. So of course, you know, I'm going to generally run with the true DFS projections. Um, again, I think we've covered this in some other videos, but I'll just cover, you go ahead and set your build. Again, if you're setting cash, you're basically getting no adjustments to the build. It's just running and looking for optimal. Mm -hmm. I'm generally playing GPPs. I'm playing a lot of single entries. You can hide these as well. If these confuse you, don't even let them get in your way. Just minimize them. Pick your field size. When you pick your field size, it adjusts those sliders to, to kind of work within the algorithms that Sabersim has set up. Tell it how many lineups you need. Even though I'm playing single entry, sometimes I still want five lineups because I might be doing five different single entries. I'm not one of those guys who enters the same lineup into five uh, into five different tournaments yet because I'm not that confident in my builds. I'd prefer to have five chances in five equally sized tournaments so that if I get one of those lineups right, I score, right? Yep. I, I know some guys do it differently. And it's great when you hit the other way, when you make that one great lineup and put it in five contests and get like top 10 finishes across the board. But I'm still at a state where I'm going to put in five different lineups. So again, even though I'm doing single entry, I'm going to build five. Again, we it actually behind the scenes, we've talked about this before, it builds a pool of 500 lineups. This is what allows you to very quickly with inside the optimizer of Sabersim, it allows you to make on the fly decisions. Ooh, that's too much exposure. Ooh, that's not enough exposure. And it doesn't have to redo this build process every time. So it does the upfront build to save you time on the back end as you go ahead and decide to tweak your players, tweak your stacks, 
change your team allocations or percentages and basically come to the ownership that you you like. So one of the things I do in my process is I usually try to have my builds at least set up to this point before I go listen to the guys on Live Before Lock. Mm -hmm. And then Live Before Lock is where I'm listening to them and, you know, Bobby, I won't say he's got a hunch because he, he's forgotten more about sports than I'll ever remember. <laughs> but he'll talk talking about a guy and he'll go, I don't know why, but, you know, there's just something tonight. I'm not playing Bregman. I know everybody else is in on Bregman, but I'm not playing Bregman tonight. I just don't love him against this pitcher. You know, he's he's a little cold. And I'll go, you know what? I'm getting a little too much Bregman. I don't want I don't want 60 percent Bregman. But like, do I want to go completely off Bregman and go zero or do I want to just like I'll still have one bright Bregman lineup in case maybe in case maybe Bobby wasn't, you know, wasn't completely right. Right. But I can also just go to zero. I can go, you know what? Just take Bregman completely out of all my lineups because I trust Bobby because he's he's made me tons of money before and he's going to make me tons of money in the future. And so you can make your adjustments there. Now you've got the players you want. Now you start listening to the guys talk about who the stacks are, or you've just look at Rody's stacks information and Rody says who the best teams are. You go look at what Sabersim gives you and you're like, hmm, I'm not getting nearly enough of Houston. Houston was a good stack on this slate. Maybe I want a little more. Go ahead and just up your exposure here, right? And this is a little bit of where the art meets the science. Sabersim starts out with the science of giving you, these are all solid EV lineups that are likely to produce well but you get to bring your art to DFS. You don't have to just follow what the computer tells you. You still get to play the players you want. And this is where you go ahead and make those adjustments. Let's say you're not in on the five stack deal. You don't want five stacks at all for whatever reason. You're you're not a five stacker, even though, even though they'll let you do it on DraftKings. You're like a cap at four. We could have done this up front, but you could just as easily do this here. You could say, I don't want these five threes. I want those four fours, right? So you take out the five. Now it's got more four fours, but it still threw me this this five two. I don't want the five twos either. Just get rid of those. Now you're now you're left with four fours and three two twos. And you know, Bobby loves some of these configurations and probably hates some others. So Bobby might do it a different way. Bobby might go, Hell, I'm just all in on the three two two tonight. Forget everything else. I only want to see three two two builds. And here you go. Yeah. Now yeah. you've got some options to play with, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now go remember, ahead. Remember, these options are still from that pool of lineups that that is based on optimal, you know good core EV lineups based on good lineup building rules that balance ownership and projected score, but still allowing you to have the control of how you put your teams together. Yep, absolutely. And, and maybe I should, this, this is great stuff, Mark. Maybe I should have led with this, but why don't we just really quickly, and maybe we should record this another time, but like just show us two minute their version of basically just how you sign up. If you're, if you're out, do you, do you have, oh, have yeah. to open? Absolutely. Let me just right, go back one screen here. Lo logged out. And then we'll show you just real quickly how to sign up. Again, we'll probably do another real quick video just to have this later yeah, on. Absolutely. But if you're on this page and you're interested in signing up and you're not already a member of True DFS, our plans and pricing link or our C plans link, either one of those will get you to the same place. This will show you what we offer. This is this is kind of our true DFS value prop. This is what we bring to the table. This is everything we're giving you. And this is the different ways you can you can kind of purchase your little piece of true DFS. If you like all the information that Eric and Bobby and Jake provide on a daily basis, but you don't need an optimizer. You're your hand builder. You do one lineup at a time. You could just take the true DFS core. You get every sport. You get every major site. You get DraftKings, FanDuel, Yahoo. You get all of our point and ownership projections. You get our premium Discord. You get it all, right? You get our videos, coaching articles, et cetera. If you need a little more, that's not enough because you don't have an optimizer and you want to start doing these 20 max GPPs. You're not ready to do the 150s, but you're ready to move into these 20 max or even maybe the three maxes or the five maxes. And you love Sabersim and you like what they have to offer. Our true DFS and Sabersim. Notice the price difference here, guys. We're only charging $25 more to throw the optimizer on top of our core package. Sabersim starter package, if you go to their website, it's going to cost you $49.99, right? So we're, we're basically telling you, have Sabersim. Like Sabersim's too good a deal. Take Sabersim. That's why this is our most popular package. This gets you everything from the core, plus it gets you Sabersim's projections, which by the way, Sabersim's projections, in addition to just being great, they also cover some sports that we don't cover. They cover every slate. So sometimes there's a midday two-game turbo slate that we don't cover. Sabersim will give you points and projections that you can utilize for that. Yep, you get their absolutely. optimizer. You can build up to 20 lineups at a time. Again, now if you've graduated past that, if you've got your, your more than 20 lineups you want to do at once, or maybe you're the kind of guy that's built your own model. You've built your own projection model, and you want to start 
importing your own projections, then you're going to need SaberSim Advanced. SaberSim Advanced, again, $99.99. What does SaberSim charge on their website, Bobby? $89.99 for SaberSim Advanced if you buy it directly them. For, so for, for $10 more, you can have our values, our projections, plus the power of SaberSim Advanced behind you. And this gives you everything you need again. So I'm going to go ahead and click purchase. Now I already obviously, you know, am signed up, but this is the exact screen you'd get as a new member as well. Um, it might ask you to like create an account first, like a login and a password. Mm -hmm. But once you get beyond that, it's basically going to tell you what the cost is. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have a coupon code, we don't run promotions every day. Our, we feel very comfortable in our pricing, but periodically when new sports roll out, new seasons, we might do a promotion. Click on have a coupon code, put your coupon code in. It'll show you the adjusted price right on the screen. So um, I'm not going to put a coupon code in because they'll probably not be valid when people go yeah, look yeah. at the video. And then they'll get confused and they'll be disappointed. But you put a coupon code in, obviously go ahead and give us your credit card information, hit sign up, boom, you're signed up. You'll get an email. You go ahead and set up a password. You come back. When you come back, you'll have your account and login page. You can simply go there. You can log in. You'll see how much you paid for your subscription. It tracks all your payments. It's got all that information that you need. And then you'll have full access to the premium content behind the True DFS paywall. That's awesome. Mark, thank you so much, man, for taking no us. No problem. Through this. Guys, if, I'm just going to remind you, any, any, any problems, questions, ideas, thoughts, things that you would like to see, put it in True DFS, DFS support in the Discord. And yep. we will have a Discord attached to this video. Uh, if you guys aren't a member already, we are going to be still free for a limited time, but it really is going to be limited. And I think this is a really good chance to take an opportunity to, to check it out yourself. There's a lot of really smart people in here. Everything is going to get answered. Everything's going to get talked about. And we are here for you. And we're here to try and make this a better experience for you. We're also trying to make you as competitive in DFS as you're able to be with your limited time constraints, because I know that that is a big issue for everyone. And uh, we're, 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 we got you. We're your one, shop, one stop shop for that. Uh, Mark, is there anything else? And by the way, sports betting needs also. I just want to, I don't want to leave that alone. I do believe it, but between, I mean, Sheets does a lot of horse racing stuff too uh, in general. But I mean, again, I, I don't want to toot my horn, but the NBA uh, bets have been unbelievable. And and I really, I mean, you, you could ask and I could I could probably pop up a bunch of those testimonials if I spent the time to actually to get them from everybody who sent them over. If the you years. were better at self-promotion, Bobby, we'd yeah, have I'm, testimonials on the website. I'm trying. I'm trying to do a little bit better, but I, I've got to get better at it. But I'm serious. This is a, a, something that I'm very, very good at. And, and you know, including prop bets, uh, regular straight bets, you know, over unders, yep. all that stuff for all the major sports. I will uh, be doing that. So, Mark, yeah. is there anything else before we no, get out just, of here? Just to wrap up. So if you're not a member already and you and you're any bit on the fence, if this video hasn't convinced you to join uh, True DFS, my advice, at least to start, is a couple things. You're looking at our website right now in your local browser. Come up here and go. Go join, like, subscribe, favorite us on, on YouTube. That's going to get you notification every time the guys go live with a new video and anytime we post videos. All our video content is essentially free, so you're going to get access to all of that. I also recommend you click this little button here. This is going to give you an invite to our Discord. Our Discord, as Bobby said, depending on when you watch this, might already might already not be free anymore. It might be premium. Yeah. There's going to be some channels you can get into for free. But if you're watching this in the next couple weeks or months, I say jump on that Discord, get part of the best fit fantasy sports community that exists again we don't do as much on on twitter and facebook but those links are there if you are on social and you want to follow us definitely feel free i really highly push those first two and then again i just want to point out this is our actual discord so our general channel here actually gets notified every time the guys go live you'll see a notification every time our projections get updated every time saber sim gets updated with our projections they get they go here and this is the spot true dfs support this is where support goes. This is where tickets goes. DMs to Bobby, that's not where you're going to get any support because Bobby's going to then need to pull me in or pull one of the other guys in that does some of the back office support stuff. So please don't DM Bobby because DMs are going to be closed if I ever get access to his Discord account. He's not going to accept DMs from anybody anymore. Put your stuff in the Discord channel. If you have ideas, if you think you got a different thing you'd like to see on the homepage, hey, Mark, I couldn't find this. Where was this? It took me forever to find it. Tell me. We're open. We'll redo. We'll redo things. We change stuff yep. all the time. Okay. Absolutely. And then my final thing, just my last selfish plug, yeah, yeah. is I'm new to DFS. I've been doing a small series. If you're if you're a low-stakes grinder learning DFS, feel free to come over and check out On The Mark. On The Mark is not free, though. It is for premium members only. So you don't get that until after you've joined. I've got three episodes in so far and i'm going to do one a week and i'm going to keep talking about the things i've learned from from the guys the things i'm doing it's not just about any one sport it's about building a process to be successful in daily fantasy sports overall so that's Absolutely. all i've got bobby 
it's great stuff, Mark. I really like what I like what you're doing, and I think that people will really get into it because I think it is really, really helpful both to a, a new user and an experienced user going through. You're going through some of the pains we've all gone through, and some of them that you know we're we're, we're going through again every day. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's really great stuff. Anyway, thanks so much, Mark. And whenever sure. you're ready, we can get out of here. And guys, yeah, good luck. absolutely. Join us at True DFS, and we look forward to having you.